No more stutters in Warzone 2, especially that pesky one when you're jumping out of the plane, and also maximum FPS with good visual quality. Which settings do you need to turn on or off, and what actually does have a huge impact on FPS? Because we don't want our games to only run good. We also want them to still look decently nice. Timestamps are in the description below. Jump wherever you would like to be. Now for baseline, we put everything on ultra. Throw it into the in-game benchmark to get our baseline FPS, but also to check our in-game VRAM usage. And that is very important because there's a setting you're most likely having wrong. Now that kind of looks terrible. 143 average FPS, but with the lows at 77, we don't want that. Most importantly, look on the right side. Total VRAM use at 6.45 out of 16 gigabyte VRAM, 40%. And we're talking about everything ultra, every maximum VRAM usage. We're now going into the quality settings of the graphics. There's the video memory scale that says how much VRAM can be used by your graphic card. And it's at 90%. And I'm using seven gigabyte. So I could set this down to 50%. The higher you have it, the not better it is. Put your video memory scale down to 50 and it will actually improve your FPS loads a wee bit. And it can work against some starters you have in the game. If you have a graphic card that obviously has less VRAM, don't worry, we're going to lower this. Try 60, 70, maybe 75. Just try to get away from this 80, 90%. You don't need that. Now, you also need to go into your Call of Duty folder under Documents, Players, and you're going to check the Options 3 COD 22 CST. And here we're looking for two things. First and foremost, we're looking for Thread. Thread count for handling the job queue. It's the render worker count. That was very complicated in Warzone 1 and Warzone 2. It's extremely easy. You just need to put in the amount of cores you actually have. For me, in this case, in the task manager, CPU course 12. And that is just being put in here. Some of you might experience putting this to 11 or one lower than you have in course works actually better. But my standard value was actually set to eight. And since putting that to 12, big impact on FPS. Then we could also work with a clutter draw distance. The maximum distance at which clutter models are rendered, 100 to 10,000. Mine is set to 5,000 right now. We could just put this down to 100, and that is all the clutter on the map, the distance to when it's actually being rendered. We're talking about grass blades, tiny rocks, and whatsoever. Improvement of FPS impact as well. Now you could just go for quality preset minimum done. But that's not the point. Because if you do that, your game looks like ass. First texture resolution can be on normal. If you have a graphic card with a lot of VRAM, you could even bump this up to high, but it's going to lose you a wee bit of FPS. Normal is here the best. Going down to low does not give that huge chunk of an impact. And it has really a big impact on graphical fidelity. Texture filter can be on high. The anisotropic filter does make all the surfaces actually look better the edges and everything it gives it some height mapping and putting this to low does have zero fps impact so you can keep this on high nearby level of detail is low same goes for distant level of detail you don't want to bump this up then the clutter draw distance comes down to short and the particle quality is on low that's very important because if the particle quality is higher you might get these lags especially when people start throwing gas grenades semtex and whatsoever add you. Same goes for the particle quality level. Bullets impacts and spray I have one on, but technically if you put it on off, it will even be a wee bit better. Persistent damage layers go off as well. Shader quality can be low. The tessellation has a huge difference on how your game actually looks. It does say it has a medium impact on your GPU. If you have enough VRAM on your GPU, put this on all because the FPS impact is minimal, but the visual quality improvement is maximal on tessellation. I'm going to put the terrain memory on max because the more terrain that's saved in your memory, the less has to be loaded during the match. On demand texture streaming comes off. It makes the game more beautiful, but it can lead to stutters in the game. Volumetric lightning on very low. The FPS impact here on high is significant. Deferred physics quality off. Water caustics off. Shadow map resolution very low here gotta be said that setting this to low very low is not much of a difference it comes down to how you do like your shadows 
very important is screen space shadows needs to be off and then the spot shadow quality can be low as well but the spot cache should be ultra why is that because it saves the shadows in your cache and whenever everything is like saved in your vram it just needs to pull it out of that and it actually doesn't have to re-render all the shadows all the time so the more shadows are actually in your vram the less going to be spontaneously rendered in and the more flowing it is and the less stutter you have particle lightning is low ambient occlusion is off ambient occlusion off is very important that can be an fps impact from 10 to 20 percent when you have that at any point ssr off as well static reflection quality is low weather grid volume is low as well then depths of field off world motion blur off and most important this is the option that will reduce most of the stutters in the game and that would be weapon motion blur if you put this on on you're not gonna stutter anymore when you're flying out of the plane I know that sounds absolutely crazy, but give it a try yourself. It might even help you with a random stutters right in the game. Weapon motion blur on. This we're throwing all together into the benchmark. And now let's see how this performs in comparison to our ultra settings, especially when we're looking at the low FPS. And the very important part is also the CPU and the GPU render times. You want that as low as possible. Three to four milliseconds is kind of going very good there. And as you notice here, and especially these battle phases, the FPS are high and smooth. That's the most important part. We're fighting inside of buildings, we're jumping into the water, we're going around, and you're staying essentially above the stable 200. There's a random explosion. There is a dip, but not a too big of a dip. Could even cap the frames to 144 if we wanted to. There's the huge explosion where obviously the FPS are tanking a wee bit lower, but you're staying above these 200 most of the time, unless someone is obviously nuking your map. And then if your FPS are not tanking down here, we need a top. And here we go. That's 213 average FPS with a 147 FPS low. There's 36% VRAM being used. We talked about that earlier in the video. As you can see, I can set this to 50% without a single issue. Now, if you're interested, if I would set everything to low, every single thing to low, I would get 221 FPS. So eight FPS more for putting everything on low while I actually do get a way better looking game with the settings I put. They have an eight FPS impact for maximum visual quality improvement. Now, if you'd like to improve your FPS, how about also your footstep audio with these simple tricks?